finally, Alec Pierce, Scuba Tech Tips. We are getting to the dry suit series again. I know, and I want to apologize for Kevin for what? not being, <laughs> for not getting all these dry suit uh, videos out sooner. There were some technical problems. Yeah. We couldn't find some of the suits that we needed to because I had a certain information I wanted to share with you. Anyway, let's get to it. Now we're going to try to get these done over the next little while so that uh, right now in the middle of July, <laughs> you have all the dry suit information so you can go out and intelligently shop for a suit before winter. I know, I know it was supposed to be last winter. Here we go. Uh, we already did one dry suit uh, video in which I showed you that really, I think it's interesting anyway, old, old suit from the 60s. The rubber one, the thin rubber one, that basically was just a garbage bag to keep you dry. Remember, I, if you go back, you'll find it there. Two pieces, jacket with an attached hood and a pair of pants, and you rolled it together here, and it was just against your skin. Unless you were smart enough to put on a pair of long underwear or something else to keep you warm. Back in the 60s, we didn't have fleece. We didn't have, uh, uh, um, uh, what do they call them, suits. Yeah, all that kind of stuff. So we wore long underwear, essentially sweaters and junk like that, which invariably got soaked, but we still stayed relatively dry. So that was the very first dry suits. There was no buoyancy in them, no special boots, nothing. But they allowed us to go scuba diving. And that was the whole idea. Suits today are much, much more sophisticated. And they break down basically today into two different styles. And those two styles are based on the materials. Within those two styles, there are differences as well. A lot of different accessories and features and so on. But essentially, if you take all the dry suits, split them right down the middle, you have neoprene dry suits and you have lightweight dry suits or fabric dry suits. There's different names for that. They used to be called laminate dry suits, but that's gone by the wayside. So neoprene and lightweight, that's what we're going to call them. The first, after the rubber dry suits, the first dry suits were neoprene. You see, wetsuits have become very popular. And wetsuits are made of foam neoprene. A neoprene keeps you warm by trapping a layer of water against your body. Water does not go through a neoprene wetsuit. I'm not sure if you're entirely aware of that. Water does not go through the neoprene of a wetsuit. It goes up the ankles, down the neck, up the cuffs and the arms, through the seams, and so on. It's not designed to be waterproof, hence wetsuit. But you can take that same material foam neoprene, and you can make a suit that is, in fact, completely waterproof, that does, in fact, keep you completely dry. All you have to do is seal the seams. So if you take a neoprene dry suit and look on the inside, sometimes on the outside too, but sitting on the inside, you'll find that all the seams are sealed. Sometimes you actually have a piece of tape, almost like electrical tape, put over the seams afterwards so that no water goes through the seams. Secondly, they put special seals, rubber seals, actual rubber seals. It could be foam neoprene, but there's foam neoprene like a wetsuit, but without nylon. It's actually a rubber material, so it seals against your wrist and around your neck. And then on your ankles, on your feet, commonly, most commonly, they actually attach a boot. It's a neoprene boot, just like a wetsuit boot, sealed as well so no water gets in. All right? So no water goes through the foam neoprene. No water goes through the seams. No water can get in through the boots. Can't get up your ankles, your wrists, or down your neck. So now you're inside of a suit that doesn't leak. Great. And it was a foam neoprene suit. That foam neoprene suit originally was seven mil, quarter of an inch thick. And that suit actually did provide some warmth, just the way it was. Although, commonly, even on a fairly warm day, even if the water was above, say, 70 degrees, which is fairly warm, you would still usually wear at least a t-shirt and maybe a pair of cotton slacks and a pair of socks, just for comfort. As the water gets colder, then you wear more and more underwear. It's like insulation in a house. If you picture that the dry suit is like the siding on the outside of the house. It keeps the rain out, right? And then between the outside of the house, the waterproof piece, and the drywall, the gypsum on the inside, there's a space, three, four, five, six inches thick, into which they put insulation. And that's what traps the heat on the inside. Waterproof, insulation, warm. Dry suit, insulation, your body. And that insulation will vary depending on the temperature of the water. 
if it uh, gets down into the 60s, high 50s and 60s, and you're most likely will wear at least some sweatsuit material, maybe a t-shirt, long sleeve t-shirt, cotton pants, maybe a sweatsuit over top of that, maybe long underwear, whatever you have. Divers over the years have used a variety of materials, different types of, of, of suits and combinations of clothing. If it gets really, really cold, then you simply put on more and more insulation. You basically insulate your body just as you would if you were going outside on a cold day. And then you put a dry suit over top to keep your body warm. In the last few years, of course, specialized uh, uh, wet dry suit underwear has been developed. And we'll talk about that in one of these dry suit series very shortly. But the foam neoprene does keep you warm, and that's one of the benefits of foam neoprene. Each of the different styles, being neoprene or lightweight, they each have their own benefits, and they have disadvantages as well. Neither is perfect. Otherwise, they'd only sell one, wouldn't they, today? But they still sell both. There are still both styles available. Neoprene and lightweight suits are both available. So neither is perfect. Each has its own special advantages that you would choose best for your diving conditions. Let's take a look at the two styles. And we'll take a look, first of all, at the foam neoprene. The old-fashioned seven millimeter foam neoprene. And that's one right there. This is a dry a wetsuit. This is essentially a wetsuit. You see, a one-piece wetsuit. Body, legs, everything else. What's different about this suit and a dry suit? What makes this into a dry suit? Well, first of all, you put it on and you seal yourself inside. That's right, there's a big zipper across your shoulders. You see that? So you climb into the suit, feet first, and then you zipper this up across your back. All right, I mentioned earlier that your ankles are sealed. So you see here that there's rubber, a rubber seal on the wrists. And after you get your wrist popped through, the inside is nylon, so it's slippery. You can pop your wrist through. After you get your wrist popped through, then you will take this and you curl it in like so. And guess what? That means that there's now rubber against your wrist. That's right. And that rubber seals and keeps water from coming in. Same thing on the neck. You see here on the neck? This neck piece, neck, has nylon on the inside, nice slippery nylon, so you can pop your head through. I don't have a problem popping my head through. Some people do. <laughs> but you pop your head through, and then after your head is popped through, then you would take this long neck, you see it's longer than really your neck would be, and you tuck it in like this. So once it's tucked in, you see once again, now it's rubber is against your neck all the way around. So you can turn your head pretty comfortably because the rubber gives, but it's sealed against your neck. And the fact is you put air into the suit because we do that. With a modern suit, we have valves to, to put air into the suit. As you put air into the suit, the seal on your neck and on your wrist actually gets stronger. It's actually pushed much harder against your skin. And then again, unlike a wetsuit, on the feet, here's the leg, the leg of a dry suit. <clears throat> nice, big, heavy duty knee on this one. A little bit of dirt. This is a well-used dry suit. This is actually from a commercial diver. Heavy-duty knee on there, and then there's a boot on the bottom. This is a molded boot, molded style it's called. So this boot is actually part of the suit. The way this suit was built, when you get down to the ankle, they put on a wetsuit boot, just neoprene. And then this rubber was molded over top of it. The rubber is molded on there to give it strength, so you can walk around and not slip. Protects you from the rock on the coral. You can walk on algae and, and various things. It's not a problem. So there you go. You're sealed inside of your neoprene dry suit. Just like that. No water gets inside. What, so the advantage of this particular style, the 7 mil foam neoprene suit, really is that it keeps you warm. Even in cold water, let's call 70 degrees would be called cold, you really don't need any insulation. You put the suit on and go and you will stay warm pretty much indefinitely. Now, these older suits are not quite as popular as they once were because there are some disadvantages. And the disadvantages may or may not be substantial. One, they're big and bulky. You can see that. This is big, it's heavy, and it's bulky. Two, it's extremely buoyant. You think your wetsuit is buoyant, your cold water wetsuit, your seven millimeter wetsuit is buoyant. Well, this is a seven millimeter quarter inch wetsuit with air inside. Now these are really buoyant. If you weigh, if you use say 15 to 20 pounds of weights with your seven millimeter wetsuit on cold water, you'll use 25 or 30. That's right, believe it or not, 
Lots of divers use 30 pounds or more. I know divers are wearing a lot more than 30 pounds of lead weight to overcome the buoyancy of the suit. Bigger diver, bigger suit, more neoprene, right? And the air that's inside the suit because dry suits have air in them. So that's another disadvantage, very buoyant as well. Advantages, they're fairly easy for these suits to be repaired. It's neoprene like wetsuit, fairly easy to be repaired. They have one more advantage that's often overlooked. I often say that dry suit is a relative term. They are much drier than wet suits, but it's not very often. It happens, it happens. So if you want to brag, let me know how dry you stay, but it's not often that a dry suit diver gets out and he is bone dry. Not very often. At the very least, he has condensation because the dry suit traps that warm, moist air inside, and of course it's against cold water, so you always get some condensation. You always get out and you're damp from condensation, but it's very common for dry suits to leak a little bit by nature. I don't mean there's a fault with the suit. Look, Get a piece of rubber stretched across your wrist. You reach up the ladder to pull yourself up and you pull like that, water runs down your wrist. Or you go like this underwater, water, it's very, very common. So you often get water inside a dry suit, no matter what style it is. A foam neoprene dry suit, a neoprene dry suit, you'll still be warm. That's right. Even if you get some water in it, you will still be warm. So that's, that's worth thinking about too. Now how have they changed a little bit? Let's take a look at another neoprene dry suit. This is another neoprene dry suit made by the same company as, oh no, different company, but very similar. But this dry suit is much different. This dry suit is nice and light and pulls up half the size. Well, what's the difference? It looks the same. In a lot of ways it is the same. It's got wrist seals, it's got boots, it's got a neck seal and a zipper, it's all exactly the same. Well, the difference is that this is what's called crushed or compressed neoprene. This used to be a seven mil suit, just like the other one, but it goes through a special process under high pressure and that seven mil suit is compressed down to four mil. That's right. This is actually the same thickness as your warm water suit, your little shorty that you wear. So this neoprene is much, much thinner. It's also lighter and less buoyant and it's stronger because it's really only the rubber that's compressed from seven down to four. So it actually becomes stronger, stronger, lighter, less bulky, less buoyant. So these are very popular and chances are if you go into a dive store and you are considering a neoprene suit for various reasons, which might be right for you, this is what you'll see. It's not too often anymore we see the full seven mil suit. Most of the neoprene suits are compressed neoprene, much more flexible, easy off and on, they're stretchy and comfortable, same seals on the wrist. This is a little different seal, but it's a rubber seal, boots, neck, everything else is exactly the same. And you get the same advantages. A compressed neoprene suit also keeps you warm, even if it gets water inside. Okay, let's stop with neoprene for the moment. I want to talk in more detail about those features, the wrist seals, the neck seals, the zippers, and the valves. I didn't mention the valves, but we'll talk about the valves in another sequence. Let's take a look now at the other completely different style of dry suit, and that is the lightweight, or fabric, or laminated, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't matter. Here's an example right here. Now this particular dry suit, I'm going to step over here, Kevin, can you get me in? This particular dry suit, this guy's got a, a buoyancy compensator on, which I should have taken off, I'll do that now. But I wanted to have a buoyancy compensator handy, because this material, it's the same material that your BC is made of. That's right, it's exactly the same material, I'm going to take it right off like this, let that BC fall off of them. And you can see here that this material is in fact very thin. It's a very, very strong nylon mesh and it has a PVC coating on the inside. So it's thin, quite strong, and it's waterproof. That PVC coating makes it waterproof. Again, it has a zipper to zip you in. We'll talk some more about this. This is a different zipper, right? This is a, called a cross chest zipper. Some people call it a self-donning zipper. That's a bit of a misnomer too. We'll talk some more about that. It has a zipper, has the valves, it has rubber seal on the neck. Let me show you that first. A rubber seal on the neck. That orange part, you see, is rubber. See it? Seal on his neck up in there. And it has the same seals on the wrist, and it also has molded boots, the same type of molded boot. So essentially, the only difference is the material it's made of. This lightweight what used to be called laminate because it's made of various layers, 
this lightweight nylon material. Okay, so what's the advantage or disadvantage? Well, the advantage is it's very light. You can roll this suit up into a little bundle, not as big as your wetsuit. So it's very, very light. It's also quite tough. You know, you can stretch and pull on it a great deal and, and it won't tear or break. Disadvantages? It has no warmth. If you put this dry suit on, I jump into 75 degree water, which you would probably consider warm. You'll get cold. Pretty soon you'll get cold. With this style, this laminate or lightweight style, you have to wear warm underwear all the time, on every day. There's no choice. The suit itself has no inherent warmth. Another advantage, because it has no buoyancy, not as much buoyancy as neoprene, you don't need as many weights. You probably wear the same weights with a lightweight dry suit as you do with your wetsuit. So neither suit style is perfect. And it will depend a little bit on what works best for you in your diving situation, your body size, and, and a variety of things. So there you go. There's the two basic styles. It's a starter on our dry suit series anyway. We're going to do some more on the dry suit series. You'll be seeing some more. Keep an eye on it. Anyway, I hope that got you started, gave you some ideas. Alec Pierce Scuba, talk to you soon.